hi to Teta. Welcome to Teta's kitchen. And today we are going to be making mulakhiyya. Did I say that right? That's right. <laughs> Step one, do not cook anything in an Arab house that's not in a besama the real step one, what's this? Chicken breast. So how much chicken do we cut up? Up to you, Habibi. How much you want them? Just two pieces of... Chicken? The chicken breast. Okay, so... Two pieces of chicken breast. Dicing it up mm. and getting it ready to put in the pot. Now that all the chicken is cut up, Teta is taking the besama pot, putting it onto the stove. And now we are going to put what looks like the garlic. So how much garlic for the this amount of chicken? Like two whole. Two whole cloves? Whole cloves. Yeah. The whole heads. Uh, what do you call the whole thing? I don't even know how you would describe that. Rasen to me in Arabic. Okay. Two whole cloves, two whole heads, shrubs, whole balls of garlic for the amount of chicken. Say it in Arabic, Teta. How, how do I say it in Arabic? Rasen of tume. Rasen of tume. Ah, okay. <laughs> the tume is not so. No, why? Because it's crushed easier because you and more coming. Ah, more, yeah, yeah, yeah. More uh, cream. So Teta's just saying, she's speaking very quietly, so I'll, I'll just repeat it. Teta said you should never crush garlic without salt because it makes it more uh, easier to crush and creamier in the end cook it with olive oil that's the first time ah uh, okay yeah because i have an allergy issue so i have to have olive oil only so that is now just oiling the base of the pot i'm going to continue crushing the garlic oh repeat that one of the garlics you saw went flying out and that is saying it means what Someone from outside of the family coming and join us. <laughs> it means someone outside of the family is going to come and join Just us. That's old fashioned. Peter. The old, old, one, old wives tales. Oh, yeah, yeah, it. yeah. All right, time to put in the meat. Now you wait. Why is the camera going blurry on me? Now you wait it until the oil heated first, yes? Yes. Yeah. All right, in goes the pepper. Yeah, pepper. And I didn't put salt because I already have. Ah, uh, and no salt because it's already salt with the garlic. Some people cook it with coriander. I didn't do it with coriander. Yeah? Yeah. And now time for the mukhiya leaves. Apparently this is called Egyptian spinach in English. I don't know how else you would oh, cook. Mulkhiya in English? In Egyptian. Yeah, yeah but in mulukhiya. English, what do you call mulkhiya in English? Mulkhiya. Mulkhiya. What? Yeah. Ah. You don't change the Okay. The Spanish is different. Paper. Make sure if you guys are not using fresh mulkhiya leaves, because it's, it, it can be quite hard to get. You buy it frozen from your Ar local Arab grocer and make sure it's whole leaves and not minced. Unless, of course, you're Egyptian and you want it the minced way. We're Palestinian and we're making it the Palestinian way. So you want whole leaves. Cut, 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 cut. Yum! If I haven't said this already, mulukhiyya is actually my favorite, all-time favorite dish. Oh. All right, now time to chop. Oh, too frozen. Too frozen. Too. Oh, so if it's too hot or uh, too frozen, what do you do? I take bigger knife. A bigger knife? Huh? Huh? Time to chop. Nope, oh, it's a bit frozen. Make sure you keep mixing the chicken so that it doesn't stick to the base of the pot. You see when it's colored paper? Yeah. Start to the garlic. Okay, so once the chicken starts to brown, that's when Teta says you add the garlic. <laughs> She's shy, but she wants to tell you guys that you wait for the smell of the garlic to perfume the kitchen, and that's when you add the mulkhiya leaves. Oh, I can already smell it. First scoop. Put the 
the top on it, Keta. When oh. you cook any green, any green cooking, like a spinach, uh, yeah. yeah, don't use the cover. Okay, so Teta is saying never cover, never use the lid on a pot when you've got the mulchiyya leaves or any green leaves for that matter, because you'll turn them black and you want them to maintain their green color. I said cooking with Teta, but really what's happening is it's Teta cooking and I'm filming. So I feel like I should probably be pulling my weight. You put like two, two lemon juice, Teta. Two scoops of lemon juice? Yeah. Or two, full one. Yeah. Full of lemon, you squeeze it. I already have a squeeze it. Oh, two full lemons. Yeah. You see how it's naked? Like that sticky... Yeah. I don't like it. I put the, the lemon doesn't make oh so the lemon juice gets rid of that sticky um, yeah. texture okay yeah I it. it must be the acidity in the lemon maybe though but this is the way my mom teach me <laughs> <coughs> and when you eat it if you need it more extra lemon, lemon you put it on. okay but you have the stove on high yeah Habibi. okay all right i always cook on high oh <laughs> is that because you're impatient no why because if I'm hungry, I want to finish. Hurry, it. yes, if you're impatient, yeah, you want it to hurry up. Yeah, Habibi, it's all gone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We must take it all the water. Oh, so you need to, yeah, you so keep stirring, making sure that you're breaking up all the, the mlochia leaves. And now for the side, because you need to serve the mlochia on top of it, Teta is going to make some rice. Anyone that is Arab will know what's happening here. Teta is making our traditional Middle Eastern rice on the side so that we can serve the mlochia on top. And on the side, Teta is filming some chicken stock. So to fill up the mlochia, usually people just add water. But Teta said that if you boil some chicken on the side and get that stock, that it tastes nicer. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> and then we use the chicken itself, don't we, as extra meat? Yeah. Yeah. Because you just eat the breast. That's why I yeah. keep it separate. I'm a fussy eater. So Teta just puts the, the chicken breast in, in it for me and leaves the rest of the meat on the side. No one judge me, please. I'm not picky with anything unless it comes to meat. So now Teta is just letting it boil. She wants all the ice water from the mukhiya leaves to evaporate before she adds the stock water. For now, we're going to do the rice. In goes the rice. Oh, you scared me. Why have you oh, because I was looking at the camera and all of a sudden the hot water. <laughs> and now, what did you put in here? Just salt, pepper, and uh, uh, some uh, cinnamon. Stick. So when Teta boiled the, the chicken stock on the side, by the way, as you can see, she's lifting up some cinnamon sticks and she also put some salt and pepper. And you just saw that she mixed it in with the mlochia. It had pretty much evaporated most of the water. And now she's just mixing it in and going to let it boil for a bit more. See? Nice and clear consistency. That's it, Habibi. How long do we leave it to boil now? Just uh, when you see it ready for it better. What are you looking for? Like a 15, 20 minutes. Oh, okay. Leave it to boil for about 15 to 20 minutes. Teta will tell us by her eyes when it's ready, but roughly 15 to 20 minutes. And there we have it. Teta's just poured it into this bowl to serve on the table for lunch with some Middle Eastern rice. See what I mean about the egg noodles? It's honestly the best rice. I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's plated up, but honestly, best dish. All right, rice in the bottom, just like that. And then come over here. Of course, Teta can never just serve one thing. She's also got to bring out some, uh, what do we call this? Rosagege. All right, in the bowl we go. Oh, look at that. So good. Make sure I get a lot of zoom. It's the best part. Yum! Get more zoom. More zoom. And that is lunch served. Thanks, Teta.
Welcome, Habibi. And as we say in Arabic, Sahtan. Sahtan.